Hello, this is Paul and welcome to another one of my videos. This particular video is about this locomotive that I made. Now this is an exact O gauge, British O gauge. Um, they call it a J94. Um, in the World War II, the War Department um, needed a locomotive that was both powerful, versatile, easy to maintain, and went to the kind of really poor track work if necessary. So they were going to build one of their own, but they did actually find this, um, the J94 was a good um, model to actually use. So what they did is they got various manufacturers to build these to their specifications, uh, but they made them, simplified them, and they also made them easier to maintain. So this effectively is one of those kind of locomotives. Now this particular locomotive has been entirely 3D printed. Um, I got some drawings, um, some very good drawings for this, and I scaled them down very, very carefully to uh, British O gauge, which is seven millimeter to a foot. And I took quite some time working on this. Now, the vast majority of this model has been created um, using a, um, a filament printer, which is um, the kind of filament that deposits filament onto a surface and it keeps building that up slowly. Um, it is made of various different parts. There are a few parts on it that were actually made on a um, resin printer, but the vast majority of, of it was actually made using a simple filament printer. Um, I have got cab details. I don't know if you can see it in there very easily on here, um, but there's cab details in there. And there is um, an area where I can actually put a glow box in. I've not actually fitted it yet, the LEDs inside to glow. Um, so looking at this model, this is radio controlled, so I can control it by my phone. Um, so let's just talk about you know how this was built up. So the actual um, the actual water tanks, boiler, firebox, all this area here was printed in one go. I actually printed this standing up on a filament printer, and uh, so it's actually standing up that way. It was effectively. Um, I found that gave the best sort of um, sort of. Um, effect so I didn't get a lot of lines and I, I kind of very carefully sanded this and then primed it for carefully and painted it. The chimney was done on a resin printer although it could have been done on a filament printer. Um, the actual little um, water filler cap was done on, on a resin printer as well. Also the actual buffers were done on, uh, on a resin printer. Now these um, injectors, they were done on a resin printer um, and also the actual uh, brakes. The rest of it was done on a filament printer, apart from, sorry, the actual, okay, we've got a couple of things here. We've got in there, I don't know if you can see in there, but there is actually the, um, there's the brake here and then there's the, uh, there's another piece there and then there's actually the back end. Here basically where all the controls are that was done on a resin printer as well um, so the wheels were done on a filament printer so were the connecting rods I had a bit of a job with these at first I made the connecting rods so they were dead straight across which I've noticed on some say for example double O gauge models they seem to be made like that I had trouble with them though particularly with these being made of plastic sometimes I found they bend uh, like that so I actually put a, I put a pivot in there now so this does pivot now like the real things do all the steps were done successfully on a, on a filament printer these were done with a 0.2 nozzle uh, the, this part here was done with a 0.4 nozzle the cab and the foot plate effectively was printed uh, with a 0.4 nozzle sorry 0.2 nozzle on a filament printer so this turned out very well. It did need a little bit of work. In fact, that has come out of there. So I'm gonna to have to screw that back into there because I wanna show you this running shortly. So it has actually got some real coal that I put in there. 
typically what I tend to do is put a bit of foam in here and then paint it black and then put some coal on there. I like using real coal. I've not tried to make coal effect on a 3D printer. I've seen it done and I didn't think it was very successful, but uh, you know, maybe there's a good way of doing it. But I had a bit of coal anyway, so I thought that'll do. So this um, did take a bit of designing, uh, I'll be honest with you, because uh, um, when I'm designing it, I like to get things right. And I had to sort of change some things, basically. So for example, I found the actual boiler itself. Uh, when I first made it, I had an inaccuracy of about two millimeters uh, at this end. So I had to redo the boiler. Um, that's the kind of thing you tend to find with research and development. That's fine. So that is basically it. And it's got quite a lot of detail. Very happy with it. Um, so that, that's basically what we've got. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn this over. Okay. It is actually switched on. This is what we've got underneath. There isn't a great deal underneath to show. You can actually see there's actually a battery in here. And there's some, uh, the electronics are here, they actually lay down here. This is the motor and there's an on-off switch here. And by the way, this actually does pop off. This front here pops off, so I can actually pull the batteries out to recharge them. I'm not going to do that at the moment, basically, but that, that does that. And I've webbed it, of course. So let's just turn it over a second. And now I've um, tightened that screw up, whichever one it was. Let's just see if we can get this running and see. So this is it running basically. And yeah, you know, for plastic wheels and plastic connector rods, it's pretty good. And this does run on track nicely. I've actually made it so the actual width uh, of the wheels it fits very nicely. Um, to a gauge standards on a track. It does run nice on track and I'll show you how to do that, how that looks shortly. I'm just going to stop it in a second and put it back into reverse and there it goes reverse. And it does go very fast. I don't tend to run these particularly fast though, but you can if you want to. Um, now, there are some things I've got to finish off on this. Uh, I've not put everything on it, such as um, if we look at the actual front of the locomotive i don't have the lamp iron uh, lamp holders on it at the front or the back and stuff like that so there's a little bit more detail to do so that's basically my very latest model uh, as i said it's a very strict toe gauge okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to put out some track on my uh, layout upstairs and i'll show you how it runs okay so this is this particular locomotive i've uh, actually Put it onto my uh, layout that's actually got pico track and it's got some laser cut buildings so i just run this forward here we go it's coming out the engine shed now, as you can see it's a very nice smooth runner it goes over points very easily and uh, i have absolutely no problem running this let's just stop that a second and let me just run this backwards I'm really run it slow to show you what it looks like now the actual coupling rods I had to change uh, to the uh, ones that go straight across and the reason being I had a little bit of trouble with those that were um, divided in the middle I'm gonna to have to redesign those and let's just move this forward and this of course is going very very slow but it works amazingly well and it's totally compatible with this kind of track it works really really nicely so I'm very very pleased with that so that is the uh, austerity in O gauge which um, I'm very pleased with it there's a few more bits I've got to finish on off on it and I do hope to put some sound in it later on as well, so I think that will work really well.